a revelation to use something like this in the consultation. It changed the way they think about their pain. It was an educational tool. It very commonly brought out problems in their lives or their history or their experience of chronic pain in the past that they hadn't really ever considered might be relevant. It focused me on actually what I was coming to the appointment for. I was homing in more on what was bothering me about that. Was it that I was unsure about the diagnosis? Was I worried that I was on the wrong medication? What the toolkit and using that helped me to do was to look much more effectively at the patient's life, how it was affecting them and how I could specifically support them to make changes. The area of chronic pain is one which is rapidly changing within primary care particularly and our techniques for management, we want to do a better job. We recognise some of the limitations of what specialist services have to offer and that we can do more. The Navigator tool will be a really important first step that's not been there up to now. I think the Navigator tool is a really important attempt to try to deal with a bit of an, the, the elephant in the room which is the, the consultation with the health professional who they themselves might not feel ent entirely au fait with regards to uh, chronic pain and its management or, or, or whatever else. And I think both health professional and patient having a list of questions there, that some of which might not be relevant but some of which may well be, at least presents an opportunity for discussion it's rare that anything disastrous comes from discussion and we have to think about having a discussion versus patients leaving consultations with 101 questions that they felt not able to ask or felt too reticent or too anxious to do so and I think that the Navigator tool is a lovely go-between I guess between health professional and, and patient to allow that discussion to occur. I think it's supported individual patients to consider their condition in a different way and to be able to present it really effectively in a 10 minute consultation to a GP. I think every patient that I use the toolkit on, something changed as a result of it. Some things were bigger than others, but something changed. But as a, as a product of using it, we both understand their condition a little better and how to manage it better. And that's been enormously helpful. It's applicable for all healthcare professionals, you know, whether it's uh, primary, secondary, tertiary care, whatever else. Why? Because I think that it's a lovely reminder of the way that consultations perhaps should go. And it's a reminder that although we wield a lot of power as health professionals, there are ways in which we can encourage a balance of power. And I think we can only have a balance of power between patient and professional if that patient is able to ask the sorts of questions that they want to ask in a relaxed way so that the consultation becomes a conversation and not one where an expert professional is offering advice on the basis of their knowledge all of the time. We have to remember that patients with long-term conditions are experts themselves. And if we forget that, then the natural response as health professionals is that we will impart our own expertise and forget that actually in front of us we have experts as well and the toolkit's a lovely way of reminding us as healthcare professionals that patients are as much experts as we are. In one patient we were able to highlight using the toolkit the enormous progress they had made and in fact we used it as a tool to celebrate the success that they'd had in moving forward with their long-term condition management. In another patient, it highlighted some of the concerns about diagnosis and assessment, and we actually made another referral as a result of that. So for each patient, it was different, but what it enabled me to do was safety net all aspects of that patient's care to consider how we could improve it together. There's parts of it that can be used very simply. I think if the GP or a physiotherapist or whoever is quite happy to give out the my pain concerns part of the tool, 
it's very simple for the, the patient to fill in. It's not, it's not a complicated thing. Uh, it prompts people to ask certain questions of their healthcare professional, maybe questions that they've thought, I'd like to know a bit more about that, but I don't know how to put it. I don't know how to ask that thing. It's a tool that allows the conversation to continue, with the emphasis being on the conversation and the power differential uh, to, be, to be less and the relationship to, to be different potentially between the healthcare professional and, and the patient, you know, because it's based around questions, feeling relaxed to ask those questions, feeling confident enough to answer those questions and feeling confident once again to ask more questions such that it becomes a, a conversation that you and I might have. Now, how I would see it is making it into a tool that could be effectively launched to any GPs that thought it would be helpful in their consultations, which patients could access it online before an, a consultation and perhaps look, at, look it up, and that GPs were informed and understood what it was about and how that might help having a good conversation in their surgery. Some GPs, some physios, some pharmacists will be keen on this kind of approach uh, and, and find it, it fits very easily with what they're doing already. Uh, and I think they'll be the, the early adopters, if you like. But I would hope that they would encourage their colleagues to look this up and to start to use it. Well, I've taken parts of it and put them on the computer system for the practice so that individual sheets or documents that will be helpful can be used. So um, they can be easily accessed by the doctors and within the consultation. And that's the same for any um, document or information sheet that we use for patients. They've got to be easily accessible. They've got to be really easy to understand. They've got to be, it's got to be the same. So it doesn't matter whether you come to see me or any other doctor in the practice, it needs to be available to all patients and they can choose whether they wish to use it or not. You have the sense of a GP with a limited amount of time that be having seen a patient over a number of occasions, perhaps not moving forward, that you have this go-between of, of the tool, allowing the health professional and the patient to ask the sorts of questions that they've maybe not felt able to ask. For that reason, it's really important for GPs, I think, and other healthcare professionals uh, to see the tool as facilitating a consultation that allows both parties to get more out of it. It's now available on Pain Concerns website for people to download. They can print it and give it out to their patients. I think it would be very helpful for us to get feedback from people uh, about their continuing usage of it, any problems they've encountered, any successes they've had with it, how often they're using it. Those kinds of feedback would help us develop this further. It's a revelation to use something like this in the consultation. It brought out problems in their lives or their history or their experience of chronic pain in the past that they hadn't really ever considered might be relevant. It focused me on actually what I was coming to the appointment for. I was homing in more on what was bothering me about that. Was it that I was unsure about the diagnosis? Was I worried that I was on the wrong medication? What the toolkit and using that helped me to do was to look much more effectively at the patient's life, how it was affecting them and how I could specifically support them to make changes. Mm -hmm.